give you the honor, the sacrifice of praise. Thank you, Lord. It's nothing like giving God the glory and the honor that he deserves. He's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. If we can't say nothing else, we all can say thank you, Jesus, because he's worthy. When we look back from where he's brought us, He's worthy to be praised. When we think about the things we've been through, he's worthy to be praised. When we look forward as to where he's going to take us, he's worthy to be praised. God is good, and he's worthy to be praised. We thank you this morning. Good morning, First Community. It's good to see so many of you out here. Many times when we get up here to preach over this pandemic, we might see three or four. But I'm happy. I see a church full. My goodness. My goodness. My goodness. We just thank you for that. For, for you who are in YouTube land and Facebook, good morning. Also, good morning. It's good to have you here. Now, before we begin, uh, I want to say that worshiping with us this morning is a Reverend Vanessa Brown, Field, Field Brown, She's an associate pastor at Beulah International Baptist Church in Tampa, Florida, and uh, Reverend Roy Hayes. Reverend Hayes is the senior pastor of the Anointed Word Church, also of Tampa. Will you please stand? Anybody else, any other visitors that we have here? Any other visitors? Will you please stand? We want to say that you're welcome. First Community welcomed you this morning. You're welcome. Uh, we want to thank the, the uh, choir, the musicians, for such a wonderful job that they're doing, you know. When he, when, they sung the song, Do You Know Jesus? I said to myself, I'm in the right ballpark. I'm in the right ballpark. Before we start, let us bow our head for a second. Gracious Father, we, we come this hour in the morning in the spirit of thanksgiving, just thanking you, God, for waking us up this morning, for giving us the mind to serve you. We thank you, O God, for enabling us to come to the house of prayer, where prayers can be heard and God's tender mercy can be found. We understand that it's nothing but your grace and your mercy that's taken us so far. Now, Father, as I'm about to speak your word, I ask, O God, that you just create in me a clean heart. 
and renewing me the right spirit. Lord, I realize that I'm nothing without you, but I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Father, we love you. We adore you. We magnify your name because your name is worthy to be praised. And these are many blessings we ask in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. What I'd like for you to do this morning is turn your attention to Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 to 29. Um, and we're going to see what God tells us in these verses. My topic this morning is we're built to last. We're built to last. The uh, scripture reading goes as such. Verse 24, it says, Therefore, whosoever heareth these saying of mine, yeah, will you stand, please, and doeth them, I will liken them to a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the flood came down, and the wind blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, and the flood came, and the wind blew and beat it upon the house. And it fell, and great was the fall of it. And it came to pass when Jesus had ended these saying, the people were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribe. You may be seated. Jesus tells this parable that compares two builders, one a wise and one a foolish one. And he let us know how important it is to have a strong foundation. Church, we need a strong foundation. We need, we need a strong foundation as a person, and we need a strong foundation as a church. We, we need a strong foundation. Now, uh, it doesn't matter if you're talking about a foundation of physical building or the foundation upon which we have built our lives on. The principle is still the same. You know, the only way we can last in life and as a church is to make sure we, our building is on the right foundation. So, so basically, it's something for you to think about this morning. Are you building on the right foundation? The Bible lets us know that both houses are similar in construction, and both houses must stand the storm. You know, this morning we're going to take a closer look and examine the two structures. Because if we're going to last, then we need to know what to look for. If we're going to last, then we need to know what we need to know, because Satan is out there, and he's trying his best to take us out. He's trying to knock us off our foundation. He's trying not to let us do the thing that's pleasing in God's sight. You know, we're building all the time, you know, whether wisely or foolishly, we're building everything we do and everything we see in everything we speak, we're building. We're building. Today uh, depends on what materials we use. You know, what we build tomorrow will depend on the material we use today. Think about the foundation you're building on. You ever thought about the foundation you're building on? Do you, uh, 
Are you found building on foundation of Jesus Christ? Or uh, you standing on the fence, falling one way today, one way tomorrow, or you on the other side? You need to think about the foundation that you're building on. You know, uh, Jesus called them to inspect their foundation. You know, he, he, he was talking to his disciples, and, and he was uh, calling them to check their foundation. He's calling us to inspect our foundation. You know, Jesus tells us the only way to build a strong foundation is to obey his words. That's how you build a strong foundation. You have to obey his word. Let, let's, let's see if we can walk the scripture for a second and see what he's saying to us. Now, uh, in verse 24, the first word he said is, therefore, therefore. And which take us back to the entire Sermon on the Mount. From the beginning, Jesus sat down and talked with his disciples. He began to speak to them and tell them how they should do their life from step to step. You know, you, you, you are the salt of the earth. You are light that shine in darkness. You know, he, he was telling them about different things. You know, he was telling them about, about love. He was telling them about hate. You know, we've we got to learn how to get over things. You know, we can't say we hate someone and love Jesus. You know, how, how, you know, how can the Bible tells us, but how can we say we love Jesus who we don't know and we hate our brothers and sisters who walk along with us every day? The Bible says you're a lie and the truth is not in you. It's you're a lie. Then he tells us everyone who hears these words and act on them may be compared to a wise man who built his house upon a rock. The key words there is hear and act. We have to hear God's word. And then once we hear God's word, we have to do what? Act on it. We have to act on it. You know, a lot of times we hear God's word, but we don't act on it. We come, we come to church. You can't beat us in the door of the church. We hear God's word, but we don't act God's word. If it's not your meal, don't take it out of the box. <laughs> the key is, is these words of mine. He said, these words of mine. He, they, these are Jesus' words. When we hear God's word, then we should obey God's word. Matthew 28 and 20 says, Jesus commanded the church to teach whatsoever I have commanded you. You know, he, 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 Matthew 4 and 4 says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. Matthew 24 and 35 says, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. You know, as Christians, we can become so preoccupied with earthly affairs that we shift our confidence from Jesus Christ to faith in our own intellect. You know, we, we don't worry about what Jesus' word says. We think about our own intellect. We're smarter than Jesus. You know, and a lot of times we have to watch ourselves for that, you know, because Satan will let us continue going. He'll let us continue going. The word of God, we come in, come in here week by week, and we hear the word of God, but we never put it to practice. We have to learn to put God's word into practice. We have to be more than just hearers, but we have to be doers of the word also. Obedience is hearing and doing. J.M. 2 and 19 tells us that even the devil believe and tremble, but they don't do. They, they hear God's word, they receive it, and they tremble, but they don't do it. We have to be more than just hearers. We have to be doers of the word also. You, you know, the topic that we're talking about is we have to be 
built to last. We have to last. Satan is trying his best to tear us down. He's doing it in every way he can. He throw everything at you. But we have to learn to, to last. We have to be built to last. You know, we have to. We have to understand what God wants us to do. And we have to understand. We have to get to that point where we see Satan coming from afar off. We, we can't let him get up on us. We have to let him from afar off. We have to stop it. The word of God is essential in our life for anyone who claims to be a follower of Christ. If you are a follower of Christ, then the word of God should be essential in your life. You should live by the word of God. In other words, you should read the word of God. You should pray the word of God. It should be essential. If you're to that point where you follow Christ and you don't, you, they ask you one time, say, look, all I ask you to do is tell me one scripture and I'm not going to shoot you. And you can't tell them one scripture. And that's rough. That's rough. The word of God gives us stability in our life. You know, when, when, when things get tough, when we can't see our way, when things don't look good, we go back and do what? We read God's word and we understand that, you know, he took care of those in the past. He's going to take care of us. He, it gives us stability. It gives us that kind of stability to know that, hey, I walk by faith and not by sight. It ain't, it ain't what I see. It's what the word of God tells me. You know, we have to do that. You know, we have to walk by faith and not by sight. Even if heaven and earth pass away, his word would never pass away. We have to understand that. I don't care what's going on. Even you can't understand it. God's word, if God's word tell you this, believe it. Believe it. You know, the word of God rescues us from danger and destruction. His word rescues us. When, when, when we can't see our way, when it, it, it rescues us because we can go back and read the word of God. You know, Satan is trying his best to knock us down. It gives us security. The word of God gives us security. You know, we're secure when we're wrapped up in Jesus' word. When we're wrapped up in his word, we're secure. Because why? We understand that devil had to go through Jesus to get to us when we're wrapped up in him. Verse 25 tells us, it says, And the rain descended, and the flood came, and the wind blew, and beat up on that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. Church, the storm is coming. It's coming. If it's not here for some of us, it's coming. It's coming. Now, now, what is the storm that Jesus is talking about here? One of them is being under the judgment of God. And the other one is the issues of life. Let's, let's look at verse 13 in, uh, in ch chapter 7. And it says, verse 13 says, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat, because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth into life, and few there be that find it. You know, uh, it says, entering at the straight gate. You know, there is a necessity to enter in at the narrow gate because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which lead into destruction. We must, we must enter that gate. 
we must enter that gate. If we accept Jesus as our personal Savior, we must enter that gate. We must enter alone. We must enter naked. And we must enter the gate in self-denial. You know, uh, the songwriter says, nothing in my hand I bring, but simply to the cross I cling. You know, uh, we have to go in that gate, that narrow gate, empty hand. You know, uh, I, I look at it to make it make it a little plain to you. I look at it like this. It looks like, like the interstate. We're going down the interstate toward New Orleans. The interstate is the wide gate. That's the wide gate. Cars going, I mean, flying, everybody. That's us. Now, when you get a certain distance, there, you can exit and you get on what's called the service road. Come on, y'all gonna get it. Service road. Service road. On the service road, there's only a few cars. Amen. Amen on the service road. He's telling us to get on the service road. Get off of that wide, broad road of destruction and, and, and get off, get on the service road. John 14 and 6 tells us, it says, I am the way, no man come to the Father but by me. And Jesus said in John 10 and 17, he said, I am the door of the sheep. And Acts 4 and 12 tells us that there is no salvation in any other name, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. We have to go what? Through Jesus. You must enter the narrow gate. You must enter this gate, for there are two destinations. The broad road leads you to destruction and hell. The narrow one leads to life eternal. Many of us come through the broad gate. Many who come through the broad gate are the many who show up in verse 22 and 23. Let's look at verse 22 and 23. It says, uh, And many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have we cast out devils? And in thy name have we done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work it iniquity. So we have to go through that narrow gate to know Jesus as personal Savior. Then there was another storm. That storm is the issues of life. The issues of life, sickness, disappointments, poverty, bereavement. You know, all of these are storms. You know, they begin to beat up on us, and the word of God rescues us from the danger and destruction. You see, this, this is the time that pills ain't going to help you. You can swallow all the pills you want. It ain't going to help you. You got to have the word of God. You have to know Jesus as your personal savior. If you're going to be built to last. That's what we're talking about this morning, church. Being built to last. You know, because Satan wants to tear you down. He, his game plan is to kill, rob, steal, kill, and destroy. That's his job. But we have to be built to last. You know, the Lord sends his word in times of trouble and he heals us. You know, we have to just trust and obey him. If we don't do anything else. We have to trust God in times of trouble. You know, as a, as a church right now, we don't have a pastor right now, but, and, and we're in the storm. 
We, you may not, you may not agree with me, but we're in a stone, and we have to be built to last. You know, you you can't go around listening to what everybody tell you. Don't do that. Put your faith and trust in God. Get on your knees. Ask God to give you help. You know, we in a storm. We in a storm. You know, my, my favorite verse is Psalms 91 and 11. I call it my 911 verse. He said he will give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Every time I run across something, I said, he will give his angels excuse me, man, charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. We need a scripture. We need something to be able to, to, to fight off the devil with. We need something to fight him all with. Although both houses look the same on the outside, a house that will last is different on the inside. Nothing in the text suggests that both houses were different in appearance. Let's read uh, verse 15 through 20. I'm trying to walk through these scriptures, if you could. It says, Beware of false prophets which come to you as in sheep's clothing, but then will they are raven wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. And do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistle? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. It's every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewed down and cast in the fire. You know. Uh, a church built to last will not just have the appearance of a church but they will have good fruits that produce. It won't just look like a church, but you will have be a church that producing. It will be producing, you know. I remember, and I'm getting ready, I'm getting ready to take you way back. When I was a little boy, my grandmother and grandfather used to bring us to church and for them, it was the second Sunday. For some of us, it was the first Sunday. Some of us, it was the fourth Sunday. But it was communion Sunday. And on that time, before we did anything, we read the church covenant. How many, how many understood where I'm coming from? Y'all understand that? The church covenant is a voluntary agreement by members of a Baptist church whereby they promise to conduct their lives in such a way as to glorify God and promote the ongoing of his church. You know, and, and it reads, it read, and we had to memorize it and read it. Having been led as we believe by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus as our Savior and on the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father, and the Son and the Holy Ghost, we do in the presence of God, angels, and assembly, do solemnly and joyfully enter into the covenant as one body with Christ. And we engage, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit to walk together, together in Christian love, to strive for the advancement of this church in knowledge, holiness, and comfort, to promote this prosperity and spirituality, to sustain it's worship, ordinance, discipline, and doctrine to contribute cheerfully to the support and ministry of the church. We also engage to maintain family and secret devotion, to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintances, faithfully to engage, faithfully in our engagement, exemplary in our deportment, to avoid all tattling, backbiting, excessive anger, to abstain from the severe use of intoxicant beverages of drink as a beverage, and to be zealous in our effort to advance the kingdom of our Savior. Every now and then, every now and then they, they, they read this 
as a reminder that, you know, hey, if we're going to be built to last, we have to follow that. If we're going to be built to last, we have to follow that. You know, there can be no fruit if there are no roots. Those were our roots. If you know fruit without the roots, the fruit is the result of the root. No root, no fruit. You know, and, and, and fruit and roots, roots are unseen. You don't, you don't see roots. The most important thing of the Christian life is the unseen part. Midnight prayer, constant studying God's word. That, that, that's, that's the most important thing. People don't see, they don't see you doing that. They don't see you uh, at midnight prayer, can't sleep at night, you got to get up and pray. You know, they can't see what you're studying God's word two or three hours a day. They can't see that. You know, roots are unselfish. They pass on and give everything they have and get to the tree, the roots. Everything comes through the roots and gets to the tree. Let's go back to our topic. It says uh, Luke chapter six, oh, Luke chapter six and verse 48 is a parallel of what we're talking about in Matthew chapter 7. And in uh, verse 6 and 48, it says, Man dug deep down and laid the foundation on a rock, which the others built without a foundation. You see, we, we have to dig what? Deep and deep and deep until we get to the rock. You know, the most important part of the building is the foundation. Once the building goes up, no one sees the foundation anymore. No one sees the foundation because why? It's underground. It's underground. And, and that's what I was trying to explain to you just a few minutes ago. We have to continue our God's word. We have to continue loving one another. We have to continue, you know, doing the will of God. We, we, we have to continue these. That's the foundation, you know. No one sees the heart of man. You know, we can examine the outer appearances, but no one sees his heart. Matthew tells us, for where the, your treasure is, there also your heart will be. Wherever your treasure is, that's where your heart will be. So if, if your treasure is not in Jesus, your heart will not be in Jesus. We have to inspect our foundation by inspecting our heart. Now, this is something that I can't do for you, and you can't do for me. You know, I, I can look at you outside. You look pretty on the outside, and everything working fine. But your heart, I can't look at your heart. I can't deal with your heart. Only you can deal and be honest with your heart. You know, you have to be the one to give your life to Christ. It's, it's a hard thing, you know. We have to, we have to be, be honest with ourselves. In order for us to stand in the storm, the Bible says in verse 25, and the rain descended and the flood came and the wind blew and beat upon the house and it fell not for it was founded upon a rock. It's important that we build a strong foundation so that we can stand through the storm. Jesus said, and the rain fell and the flood came and the wind blew and slammed against the house and it did not fall for it was founded on a rock. That rock is Jesus. In verse 25, Jesus did not say if the rain might fall or the flood might come, you know, it's coming. It's coming. The wind blew. He's telling us to 
continued doing his will. And he's telling us straight up that the storm of coming. Church, we as the church have to realize that we're in the storm. It's not coming. We're in the storm. But we have to be able to be built to last. We have to last. We have to last. The storms of life are what tests us. It is the storm that reveals the strength of your foundation. The storm. You know, just because we are obedient to Jesus' word does not guarantee protection from trouble. And yeah, you, just because you read his word sometime, it's, it's coming. It's coming. You know, David tells us in the 23rd Psalm, he said, Yea, through our walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thou art with me. You know, he understood that there was going to be some tough days, but he didn't fear the Lord because he knew that what the Lord was with him. Do you do you do you think that way when things come upon you? Do you believe that the Lord is with you? Do, do you worry about if the Lord is with me? Because the Lord was with David, the Lord is also with us. You know, because of the victory of Jesus at Calvary and because we are in him and he is in us, we shouldn't have to worry about the storm of life ever being stronger than a rock that we built on. Jesus went to the cross for us, church. He died for me and he died for you. You know, all we have to do, he's sitting at the right hand of the Father making intercession for us. All we got to do is do what? Give it to him. He is our rock, you know. He is our rock. So don't, don't give up when the rain falls, church. Don't give up. Don't give up when the enemy comes at you like a flood. Don't, don't give up. We have to be built to last. We have to last. We have to be built to last. Remember this, that he who done a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. He's on your side. He's on your side. I don't care if the rain come, the wind blow, whatever. Trust in God. Put your faith in him. Walk by faith and not by sight. Continue putting your faith in God. We're going to make it, church. We're going to make it. You didn't hear what I said. We're going to make it, church. We're going to make it because we're built to last. My final point to you today is this. A hymn writer, Edward S. Moat, said, My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. I shall not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. We're going to make it, church. We're going to make it. And that's my message to you this morning. Now, there may be someone in the audience or someone in Facebook audience that just don't know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. Now is the time to give Jesus, make Jesus your choice. You want to be built to last? Give your hand to Jesus right now. He's standing at the door waiting on you. Why don't you come?
Now is the acceptable time. And now is the day of salvation. God is good. Why don't you come this morning? He says, come. God is good. We just want to thank you. Before we sit this morning, what I like uh, this morning is for my wife to come up. Come in. And I know we can't come to the altar, but you can stay there. And I want her to pray for you, the altar prayer. It may be something you want to give to God this morning. You know, we're going to, she's going to pray for you as Let us join hearts and souls together as we go to the Lord in prayer on this morning. Father God, this hour in the morning, dear God. Father God, we come once again to say thank you. Father, we thank you for your love and kindness. We thank you for your tender mercies. Oh God, realizing that if it had not been for you on our sides, where would we be on today? Father, we thank you for being such a good God such a caring God and such a forgiving God. Father, you look beyond our faults and you see our needs. Father God, we come humbly before you, God, just to say thank you. Father, you've been so good. You've been so kind, Father. Now, Father, you know our hearts. You know our minds. Father, there may be something in our hearts, God, that we're dealing with. You know what it is, dear God. Father, you told us in your word to cast our care upon you because you care for us. You also ask the question, is there anything too hard for you? And we know that the answer is there is nothing too hard for you on today. Father God, we come lifting up First Community Antioch Baptist Church to you, dear God. Father, we thank you for the man of God that proclaimed your word on this morning, saying that we are built to last. We know we're going to go through the storm, the rain going to fall down. But if we, we know that we are built on a strong foundation that we're going to last. Father, we ask right now in the name of Jesus that you would keep us together as one, as you and your father are one. Father, when one rejoice, let the other rejoice. And God, when one weep, let the other weep. God, there are so many of us on our beds of affliction right now. God, we know you're a healer. We know you're a deliverer. We know you're a savior. God, we're depending upon you today, God, for we realize that without you, we can do nothing. God, we thank you right now. God, keep your hands upon our children right now, dear God. As they're out of school right now, so many on that little machine called Facebook and Twitter, whatever, God. God, keep them from the enemy right now and keep the enemy from them, God. Because as he said, Satan is going around as a roaring lion and he's seeking whom he can devour. But help us, God, to stay close to you right now, God. Father, because we need you right now. And God, as we're about to go home, God, God, give us traveling grace. Watch over us. Keep us from the enemy and the enemy from us, God. And God, all that we do and all that we say, God, God, we want to give your name glory on today. We want to do things that are pleasing in your sight. We want to say things that are pleasing in your sight. God, watch over us and keep us, God. God, we ask this right now in your name, we pray. And let all the saints of God say amen. Thank you, God.